Beyond the Headlines program, and I'm your host, Petro Saile. <clears throat> Beyond the Headlines is a Pan-African news and information program designed to serve and promote alternative views. Beyond the Headlines will be conducted in various national ethnic language, uh, although today we're going to use English as a, a means of communication. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but we'll have this program every Sunday between 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time and from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Today, we have a special guest. Uh, his name is Joshua Lita. Uh, Joshua Lita, especially in the Twin Cities, and I would say in Minnesota, is uh, <laughs> a household name. <laughs> and uh, we have him here at our studio. Uh, Joshua Lita is an executive director for Mazuk Production. Uh, so we're going to talk about the history of African music uh, for the last uh, decades in, in, the, in the Twin Cities. Hello, Joe. How are you doing? Hi, my brother Petrus. Yeah. I'm, 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 thank you for inviting me over here. So I'm happy to be here. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about inviting you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but we, still, we, we finally did it. We finally did it. Yeah. Now, now, you know, what I can do is uh, sure. I can just check that off. Check so. that off. <laughs> done with that. Perfect. <laughs> We don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you, Shalita. Um, Shalita, uh, don't need much introduction, but if you can say a few words about yourself, uh, just a little bit, but I do have a f six questions that I have uh, prepared for you. Okay. Let's go ahead. Um, well, you're right. Uh, I'm, I'm Joe Shalita. You know, I, I came to the Twin Cities in 1980. But uh, initially, I came to the United States back in 1972 um, from Uganda. And um, I went to school in Wisconsin. I went to uh, high school, and then I went to college at the University of Wisconsin. I graduated uh, uh, from Platteville in 1978. Um, then I briefly worked uh, at a UHF TV station in Dubuque, Iowa, mm, okay. uh, before my uh, friend, um, Mr. Mpambara, who I went to school with in Wisconsin. He had moved up here to Minneapolis, and that's what uh, brought me up here to the Twin Cities uh, after college. You know? After college. Right. Okay. I know MP myself, too. Yes. <laughs> I remember him from way back. But to start with, let's start with this music. Uh, what, what is the title of the music? Uh, this a song you're going to play is called uh, The News. And um, funny, it was my first uh, attempt, of course, at recording. <laughs> oh, okay. recording, yeah. Uh, and I, I wrote that song back in 1982. And in those days, in 1982, uh, this was before the collapse of the uh, former Soviet Union, the okay. USSR. Yeah. And um, uh, it, it, the song really uh, discusses the uh, issues that were paramount in those days around the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And strangely enough, those issues are still the same issues, you know, how many years later? 30 something years later. So, so it's yeah. still appropriate, in my opinion. Okay, perfect, perfect. So we can start with that song. Absolutely. And the title of the song is? The News. The News. So have you heard the news lately? Yes. <laughs> this is good, okay.
be free, be free in order for this small planet that we call home yeah. to uh, really uh, move forward in, 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 in ad as advancement of us as human beings. Yeah, I, I think it's natural, just like you said, mm -hmm. you know, if your country is stable and your next door uh, nation is not, eventually you will come back to uh, to, to well, that's the nature of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All absolutely. Right. So uh, I have a few questions yes. uh, for you. <clears throat> Since I, I've known you for over 30-something years. Yes, you have. Should we call it just 30 plus? Yes, you have. <laughs> I'm not going to mention the years. <laughs> uh, but the first question is, when we talk about African music in the Twin Cities, mm -hmm. Joe, Shal Joe Shalita's name comes to the forefront. Tell us how did this happen? How did, our, how did your interest in music develop? If you can go back to your childhood history, when, when you start music, when you develop that interest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as coming from Africa, music is uh, such an intrinsic m and part of our culture. And of course, it's all other cultures as well. But um, I started, uh, I think I picked up the guitar when I was 13 years old. Okay. And, uh, and of course, I was self-taught. Uh, uh, there was only one guitar at my school, and there were only two kids who were interested in playing the that music, guitar, right? myself and another kid, and both of us ended up being musicians. He's in London, his name was Del Mukungu, a very famous Ugandan musician. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I, I used to listen to a lot of uh, uh, um, great African musicians, and they inspired me, and I just said, man, that just sounds really good. and, and, and um, uh, and that's what kept me uh, starting. Yeah, okay. kept, okay. kept me. I picked up the guitar, and I, like I said, I was self-taught, and then I learned. And then uh, as I, I grew grew older, then I started trying to, to formally get educated about my instrument. Okay, okay, yeah, we'll we'll come to the to the household name later on. <laughs> but uh, I've known you since the early eighties. Mm -hmm. In the early eighties, you performed with a band called Sweet Test of Africa. Oh yes. Can you tell us about this good old days? Uh, man, those were the innocent days. I think the, no, all of the Africans in the Twin Cities, I think we, we knew each other. It was a, such a small uh, community. Um, but like I said, I went to college at the University of Wisconsin in Platteville uh, with my friend, uh, Mr. Pambara, and he mm -hmm. moved up here. Mm -hmm. So after I graduated, he told me, hey, come on up here. We started this band, this African band. Oh, he was uh, in Minneapolis? He was already in Minneapolis, oh, okay, and, okay. and he, he and I used to jam when we were in school. And so I said, come on over, and um, so I came over, and uh, uh, suddenly my guitar skills came into play. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we, uh, we, we got together, myself, um, Pambara, uh, Mr. Hassan Omari. Oh, Hassan Omari. Yeah, yeah. Our, our, our brother Hassan Omari, mm -hmm. um, our brother Mr. David Mutebi. Um, and, and the drummer? And the drummer, oh, we went through so many drummers. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we were the core of the group. Okay. okay. Yeah, those uh, four, four, those four Africans were the core of the group. And, of course, we hashed about, uh, you know, what should we name the band? And I, I believe uh, we got to the consensus of Sweet Taste of Africa um, after we discussed it. And yeah, that's how we came about. Mm -hmm. uh, these days, the African community grew very large. Uh, Exponentially. Expo yeah, by some estimate, it says 80 to 100,000 Africans. Only? That, by some <laughs> estimate, it could, it could I be. Th I think that's a low estimate because I, I believe just our Somali brothers and sisters, probably uh, close to 80,000. 80,000, yeah. Yeah, so I can imagine, uh, yeah, we, we definitely over 100,000 yeah. Africans, and that's a big market. Yeah, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. they, they, they did a study about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the 10 years ago estimate yeah. within that 10 years I'm sure it, it grew but <coughs> all the people that you mentioned you know Hassan Omari yes you know, Pambara yes. you and uh, the other couple of guys yes in fact uh, you were performing at one high school Clinton High School or somewhere that's mm -hmm. where I we used to go there once a month okay. and listen to the song those days there uh, was any hardly any African band Right. You were the only one. You were the only one, yeah. <laughs> and now yes. the, the things are different, but we'll talk about it later on. <laughs> okay. okay, this is uh, the good old days. Mm -hmm. At one time, 
your band was simply called Shalita, yes. which is your name. Yes. I believe it lasted for about 15 years or so. Yes, 15 years, yes. And it became a household name. Before it disbands in 1999, mm -hmm. tell us about those years and how African music received uh, on, on those days. Um, you, you, you know, uh, me, I was you know, driven by the fact that they weren't, they weren't uh, any other groups playing and uh, performing African music. Mm -hmm. And since uh, that's what I knew best, I figured, you know, I mean, that's, I, I needed to play that because that, uh, especially to our community, which was small, but still, yep. uh, they didn't have anything with which you can say, hey, this is from home. Oh, so uh, it, 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 it was in a way, uh, without my knowledge about it, was mm -hmm. in a way, it became a glue of uh, getting people together okay and I think that's a, that's what uh, helped uh, 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 the music to, uh, to grow because people could relate to it and they would mm -hmm. come and then as, uh, as uh, our word uh, got out and uh, then uh, we got uh, a contract down in Stillwater we were down there for six years I remember that then place. it just yeah. blew yeah, yeah. blew out exponentially yeah. Uh, and that one, you know, I have to uh, give credit to uh, our drummer, Mr. Michael Hurley, because mm -hmm. he, he lived out in Stillwater, and he knew the, um, uh, the uh, restaurant where we played at, the owner. Oh, the owner. He, okay. he, he talked to the owner and said, you know, give this band, just, you know, give it a, uh, a try. You know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he, he never regretted it because it, 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 it became even a... Uh, uh, more of a, a meeting place for everybody, regardless where they came from. Exactly. Africans, exactly. Uh, Europeans, uh, you name it. Yep. In fact, what I remember was, you know, I was one of the very loyal customers. Okay, I, yeah. I used to come yeah. there. As a matter of fact, you know what I always say? Yeah. Said, and forgive me, <laughs> okay. you know, there were so many children born yeah. from people meeting together meeting over there. there yep. All of them should, yeah. should have been, there should have been some called Shalita. Shalita, you see? <laughs> because there's so many. <laughs> you never know, they probably did. <laughs> <laughs> they should but, have all been, there yeah. are a few, few Shalita kids going around there, yeah. you know what I mean? So, Not mine, though. <laughs> but now I understand. The husbands may accuse you. But That's you know. right. <laughs> I'm not the mailman. The mailman. <laughs> No, the thing is, yes. I, re I remember that place. It used to be the, called the Trump. Yeah, Trumps. It was Trumps, right? Yeah, yeah. Trumps. yeah. Nothing, yeah to not, nothing, nothing to do, to do with, with this guy. Trump. Okay, but that uh, was the original Trumps. Yeah, it, it, it was right next to the, the lake. Right, right uh, next to the river. Yeah. Still water. Yeah, it's still water. And uh, yeah, it was good. I remember. And you used to play early from seven yeah. to ten or yeah. six. Yeah, from to ten. six six to ten. Yeah. And we used to drive about uh, People an, hour, drive, an hour from here. Drive all the way from downtown. Yeah. St. Paul and Minneapolis and yeah. all the way to there, you know, 22 miles going back and forth. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, at first, you know, the uh, community wasn't quite sure all these uh, foreigners coming yeah. into their small town. Yeah, you yeah, know, Stillwater yeah. is yeah. Minnesota's first city. city yeah. uh, but eventually uh, the people of Stillwater were so, uh, they could see that uh, we, were, we were peaceful and yeah. everybody was right, even the police, because that they used to make a lot of stops at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, I remember. But yeah. eventually, even they used to stop me all the time. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually then they said, oh, it's you again? Yeah. Okay, keep going. Go ahead. <laughs> and the thing is, Stillwater is a 100% uh, white community. Absolutely. Yeah. And although uh, Stillwater Prison has a 90% uh, African American. That's a topic for another. Yeah, that's a different topic. <laughs> but we'll have to talk about that. The fact that. performing in that uh, neighborhood, yeah. uh, you know, as an African, uh, and people were accepting. Absolutely. And there was a, all the Stillwater community came to see African music. Mm -hmm. yeah, those, those are my, I remember. So you performed with that band as Sholita? Yes. Okay. And <coughs> uh, you also played with many talented musicians yes. at, uh, during this time. Uh, can you name some of the talented artists you think that should deserve uh, recognition? Oh, absolutely. Uh, not only, uh, I, you know, I've, I've uh, played uh, as a musician and also I've played, I've worked as a, a roadie, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think my first job was working as a roadie for the late, great uh, Peter Nelson with Shangoya. Yep, yep. And 
uh, that was, you gave me an eye opener on how, like when you go on the road, and also exercise of, you know, putting this staging together, putting the sound systems together. Yep. It really uh, helped me uh, to uh, learn a lot of that until, uh, then I worked with Ipsa Factor too as a guitarist for okay. some time. Okay. Um, but I was still itching for that African music, because that's what I know best. Yeah, yeah. So eventually I said, no, I'm going to start my own band, yeah. the Shalita Band. And uh, uh, that's, uh, you know, and then... That's how it started. Yeah, that's how it started, okay. yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, and by the way, to get the, the, to start the Shalita Band, I had to find people who, number one, <laughs> sorry, number one, loved African music yep. and were motivated to uh, play it and to learn how to play it. Uh, and also uh, we're dedicated, uh, you know, this is not, if you were thinking about getting rich, you're in the wrong business. Mm -hmm. So to make sure people just love to play music. And so I ran into a like, brother, Brain Bomber the from Bomber. Cameroon. I remember him. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, he was our bass player for all those years. And so him and I, uh, and uh, uh, we would find a couple other people mm -hmm. to, to be the, uh, the center, the, the core, core group, core of the group. Yeah. and okay. we worked, we worked for months and months before we did our very first show. We worked for months, so when we came out, we were yeah, really okay. good and tight. Yeah, yeah. Brain uh, went back to Cameroon, right? He, yeah, but I, I believe uh, he's, he's in Alaska. Oh, right. okay. Right, okay. in Alaska. He should call me up there so we can do some gigs. Yep, yep. <laughs> you see now, since you mentioned Shangoya and uh, Ipso Facto, those are groups that we we used to go as a teenager mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> so you perform with them too they yeah. still per, uh, ipso facto still oh, ipso exists. facto is still kicking hard shangoya so is just uh, shangoya you know we, when the late peter nelson, nelson passed yeah, away yeah. you know shangoya you know passed away with him because he was shangoya yeah he, he was he was the one yeah he yeah. was shangoya the, the drums yeah, may, still he, may he live in peace uh, yeah, uh, may, he, may he rest in peace and yeah maybe we'll, we'll do a peace one day of those musicians who are now with us yeah and uh, we'll have uh, another program for that <coughs> another thing yes. that people don't know about shalita is uh, you also managed kanda bongoman's u.s tour yes i did <laughs> and perform with him as well and perform with him as well too you know he he took a gamble with me <laughs> <laughs> no the first time i talked to him probably uh, the other way around he was in um calgary Canada, Canada, you know, and, and I, I, I just want to whim, just, you know, call him up and said, hey, Kanda Bongoman, you know, uh, we know how to play your song in the morning. In the morning, <laughs> yeah. Was, that was his big popular song yeah. at that time. And uh, then he said, um, okay, what do you want? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I said, well, I'm thinking about, you know, why don't you come to Minneapolis, you know, maybe we can do a show with you. At, at first, he was kind of hesitant about it because, you know, he says, I have my own musicians from the Congo and stuff like that. And he said. So I, it took a little cajoling him to uh, to uh, just have uh, the courage. Yeah. When he came, when we went, got down to my basement, because we had, we had played his song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew it like from the back of our heads. He said, what? We, 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 I want to meet you guys' mothers where you were born. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how he, we, he we was got started. He was yeah. impressed. Yeah, yeah, he was okay. impressed. And yeah. so we, it was great working with him for, for that one year. We, to me, it was uh, because he's such a was such a big African star. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It opened uh, also avenues for us because we, with him we were able to tour different cities in America. It was a North American tour where we would never have been able to open those doors. Yeah, yeah. I, and I remember that song, the one you just mentioned. Yeah, uh, in the morning. In the morning. Yeah, uh, you yeah. Per, you play it every now and then. Oh yeah, yeah different yeah, places. Yeah. Okay, this is great. Uh, you also you still active in the Twin Cities and beyond. So where do you perform now if people will come, wanted to come and see you? Um, you know, you know, and you've seen the, the, the um, you know, the nature of life music in mm -hmm. Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, one of, it's one of my disappointments in the fact that we have now, maybe because I don't go out as much as I used to, mm -hmm. I just feel that there's f fewer venues for live music uh, nothing against DJs, but it seemed like DJs have taken over. Yeah. And, and I understand it's an economic thing because most of the people own places, you know, it's easier and cheaper to have a DJ than have a whole band because the whole band is a little bit more expensive. And I get that. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, I, 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 it, it's difficult for, for me to see that 
there are not enough venues for live music because it's important to have that live music and to uh, have that uh, 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 intimate setting where you can actually, you know, people can actually be there and uh, you know when you play a, a song on a, on, a, on, a, on a DJ thing, you can't see the artist, but mm -hmm. when you're having a live performance, you know, it's, it's, it's just something different. Different, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah so sure. I hope that uh, uh, eventually that, that kind of scene will come back. Will come back, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah do you, do you uh, perform anywhere um, in this case? <coughs> well, I was uh, performing at Jumbo Africa, you know, Jumbo oh, yeah, Africa. Yeah, we were yeah. there for a while. Yeah. And of course, you know, we uh, tried to uh, get the word out. But I, it's like I said, you know, the, the economics these days are just kind of real tough for, for, um, for live musicians live and live musicians. bands. However, I've been lucky to be able to perform with uh, great uh, international artists, you know, backing them up. Mm -hmm. We I recently um, uh, concluded a show with Chameleon, who is one of Africa's superstars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We did at the Uganda National Convention in Chicago, and um, so uh, I. I I, I, I have to, uh, at my age now, I guess I got to yeah. be choosy where I perform. To perform. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, I would not like to pass without thanking you on the Tempo Africa TV's mm -hmm. uh, annual celebration. Mm -hmm. You performed. Oh, yeah, that was uh, fun. Uh, that was great. Innocent was there, too. So oh, yeah. I yeah. really appreciate for what you guys did for us. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, I do not like to let you go without asking this last question. Yes. Compare and contrast. What was the African music music scene 30, 35 years ago, and to that of today? Um, well, you know, a lot of uh, our fans who used to come to us with passion, yeah. many of them now got kids to take care of. <laughs> okay. They just don't have the time. time. <laughs> and I get it, you know. Yeah, okay, okay. So uh, it's, uh, um, uh, I would say, when I, 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 I would say that our scene, our boat, mm -hmm. that boat mm -hmm. has left, <laughs> you know, but there's a new bigger boat with our younger generation yeah. uh, and it's great to see a lot of young musicians now who are, who are really, uh, who have the passion mm -hmm. to learn to their instruments and to play. There are a lot of young musicians here with bands and so that's why I'm uh, advocating that to open up venues for these artists to be able to for the young generation, right, yeah. to have that, yeah. to be able to uh, perform live and uh, uh, whatever it is that I can do, and I know you do, you do a lot, and we we, we have to have an interview about you about because you okay. you've done a lot in, in in promoting not just music but art in general and uh, and uh, discussion and discourse within our community, uh, and so we need to keep pushing that envelope. Pushing that, yeah, yeah, having ev avenues for right. for for discussion, for art, art and things like that. Yeah, because when, when the African community was very few in number, mm -hmm. uh, you guys were the trailblazer. Right. You, you gave direction, you make the, the majority community here yes. comfortable and through your art and uh, culture. So, uh, I mean, the music played a significant role. Thank you. I thank can you. testify for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. I, I, I told you earlier, mm -hmm. We, we didn't know what we were doing, you know, I yeah. think it was like one of those innocent yeah. journeys. Yeah. We didn't, so when you say trailblazer, to me, yeah. just like, what? It is true, I, yeah. I, I, we, we, but I'm, I thank you very much for, yeah, yeah. for giving uh, you us You know, that. I'm counting all the trips that I make to Stillwater. Yes. To see you guys at least yes. twice a month. Yes. And I see the people who came there was from all kinds of uh, all kinds of people. So yeah, all kinds say. of backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. backgrounds. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that when I say trailblazer, I think I'm on the right track. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Do you have any uh, uh, thing to say to our uh, viewers? Because uh, you're not. This is not going to be the, the only time we will um, invite you a few more times. But okay. until then, well, I, well, first I'd like to thank you for inviting me oh, okay. to you. your show and to your uh, program here, yeah, Temple Africa. I would like to congratulate you guys for your new home. This is great, and this is uh, what we need, you yep. know. So uh, 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 I invite all the viewers out there, please press, sp spread the word out about mm. online Temp Africa. Tem yeah, Temp Africa. Uh, Temp Africa TV, because that's in it's important. A lot of dis discussions and topics that are discussed in this uh, venue, venue yep, uh, right. and we, that's what we need. We need, we need places where we can 
whether whether it's we're venting uh, or we're creating, right. uh, and and so you guys are we the glue yeah. for the community. You know, thank this you. this is the glue. So congratulations on thank that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Shalita, for taking your time and come to our studio for this interview. As I said, this is not going to be the only one. We'll have many more uh, in the near future. But before we close, we wanted to. Uh, uh, play this music yes if you can introduce it for us uh, I think that this song is uh, when uh, uh, the live band Marimba Africa Marimba. was performing at uh, the now defunct um, college in St. Paul uh, it was a music um, oh the, the music college me, yeah it was uh, I can't, can't remember the name of the I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right downtown St. Paul. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that it, 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 it closed. Yeah. And our drummer used to be one of the instructors there. Okay. So we're performing, I believe, a song written by uh, Papa Siama, Siama. Uh, okay. called Malembe, which means peace in Malembe. Kikongo. And um, so, yeah, that's, you know, this African music is perfect. As good as it goes. Thanks, Shilita, again.